ever wondered about the true nature of understanding? This concept as perceive it is far more intricate than merely adhering to a predetermined set of rules or reacting to stimuli. It involves a deeper comprehension, awareness, and an ability to interpret symbols, language, and actions. Now, conjure an image of a chamber where symbols are swapped without the slightest comprehension of their significance, yet the replies are so precise, it implies the presence of an insightful entity within. This scenario forms the foundation of the famous philosophical thought experiment known as the Chinese Room Argument. It challenges our pre-established beliefs about artificial intelligence, scrutinizing if a machine, despite its superior programming and processing skills, can truly possess the same cognitive abilities as humans. Intrigued? Stay tuned as we explore a philosophical argument that questions the entirety of artificial intelligence. Imagine being in a room, responding to Chinese characters without understanding a word of Chinese. This is the central idea of the Chinese room argument. This thought experiment, conceived by philosopher John Searle in 1980, puts you in a room. Slipped under the door are strings of Chinese characters, a language foreign to you. Along with these characters, you receive a set of instructions in English, telling you how to respond. You follow these instructions diligently, manipulating symbols and numerals, and in return, you slip out the appropriate strings of Chinese characters back under the door. From an outside perspective, it seems as if a proficient Chinese speaker is in the room, but inside, you're merely following a set of rules, a program. This scenario is a parallel to how computers operate. They adhere to programmed rules to manipulate symbols akin to you inside the room. However, the crucial question the Chinese room argument poses is, do they comprehend the symbols they're manipulating? The difference between syntax, the structure of a language, and semantics, the meaning behind the language, is essential. You're responding accurately to the Chinese characters based on syntactic rules, but the semantic meaning behind those characters remains unfathomable. A computer can be programmed to follow syntactic rules to respond to inputs, like in a conversation. It can even pass the Turing test, creating an illusion of intelligence. But, as per the Chinese room argument, it's merely mimicking understanding. This argument encourages a debate that continually makes us question our comprehension of artificial intelligence. The Chinese room argument has profound implications. This argument questions the very basis of artificial intelligence by demonstrating the limitations of the Turing test. The Turing test proposes that a computer could be deemed intelligent if it can convincingly replicate human responses. Conversely, the Chinese room argument puts forth that replicating responses doesn't necessarily imply genuine comprehension. This argument distinguishes between merely following a set of rules to simulate comprehension and the ability to grasp the essence of these rules. The Chinese room argument underscores the critical role of biological processes in cognition. It posits that the human mind, with its complex biological operations, is not just a data processing system along the lines of a computer. Notwithstanding its critics, the Chinese room argument continues to stir discussions about the boundaries of artificial intelligence. John Searle's Chinese Room Argument has had a significant impact on discussions about artificial intelligence since its debut in 1980 in the journal The Behavioral and Brain Sciences. It evoked a mix of criticism and praise, leading to numerous academic debates. Initially, the article was accompanied by comments and criticisms from 27 cognitive science researchers, which were followed by Searle's. In 1984, Searle elucidated the Chinese Room argument in his book Minds, Brains and Science. The argument gained further traction in 1990 when it reached a wider audience through Scientific American. In this periodical, Searle's argument was included in his contribution, Is the Brain's Mind a Computer Program? Followed by a responding article, Could a Machine Think? Written by philosophers Paul and Patricia Churchland. In the following years, Searle and philosopher Jerry Fodor had a published exchange about the Chinese room. The essence of the Chinese room argument is Searle's thought experiment, 
wherein he likens himself to a symbol processing program written in English. Searle's point is that following instructions for manipulating Chinese symbols wouldn't make one understand Chinese, just like a computer can't truly grasp Chinese by following a program written in a computing language. This argument primarily addresses strong AI, the belief that computers can mimic human mental capabilities and does not contest weak AI, the view that computers are useful tools simulating mental abilities. Searle's argument does not negate the potential of machine thinking, as he admits that brains are machines and they think. Rather, it disputes the idea that formal computations on symbols can produce meaning. Searle's wider argument implies that the Chinese room experiment showcases the inability to derive semantics from syntax. This has given rise to further discussions about the identity of the understander and whether a system, a program, or a physical device can truly comprehend. In the wake of Searle's Chinese room argument, a flurry of counterarguments came to light, each questioning distinct facets of the thought experiment. These rebuttals can be grouped into primary categories, each varying in their degree of concession. The first category of response concedes that the man in the room lacks comprehension of Chinese, but posits the program may still foster Chinese comprehension, not by the room operator, but by a different entity. This forms the crux of the system's reply and the virtual mind reply, with the suggestion that a larger, smaller or distinct entity may develop insight through the Chinese room. The second category grants Searle's assertion that a natural language processing program alone, as described in the Chinese room scenario, does not give rise to comprehension. However, they propose a modified computer system could. This could range from a computer within a robotic body engaging with the physical world via sensors and motors, known as the robot reply, or a system simulating the detailed operation of the human brain, neuron by neuron, known as the brain simulator reply. Finally, the third category doesn't concede to Searle's argument at all. They suggest that the original Chinese room scenario might entail the man understanding Chinese, or deem the scenario as implausible. They argue the reliability of our intuitions in such cases, the subjectivity of comprehension, and even against the presumption that any system can execute any computer program. The other mind's reply is closely aligned with Turing's own stance. Alongside these specific counter-arguments to the Chinese room scenario, some critics also independently dispute Searle's broader assertion, contending that semantics, or meaning, can be derived from syntactic symbol manipulation, including in a digital computer. These debates persist, shaping the discourse around the nature of cognition. In the aftermath of the Chinese Room argument and its subsequent counter-arguments, a deeper exploration into the larger philosophical issues is warranted. John Searle, the originator of the Chinese Room argument, believed that his thought experiment supported a larger point he suggested that the failure of the Chinese room to produce understanding could be attributed to the fundamental difference between syntax and semantics in language understanding. Syntax refers to the rules governing the structure of sentences, while semantics refers to the meaning derived from those sentences. This distinction raises a critical question. Do computers truly understand language? or do they merely simulate understanding through syntactic manipulation? This debate has significant implications for theories of mind and human cognition. Further, Searle's claim that syntax is observer-relative has also been challenged. Some argue that a computer's symbol manipulations do not need an observer to be meaningful. They propose the concept of syntactic semantics, a view in which understanding is seen as a special form of syntactic structure. As we delve deeper into the Chinese room argument, we must confront the ongoing debate about the nature of understanding and intelligence. This is especially pertinent in the context of artificial intelligence, where the line between simulation and genuine understanding is continuously blurred. As we can see, the Chinese room argument has sparked a wide range of discussions and debates challenging our understanding of artificial intelligence and human cognition. The philosophical issues it raises stretch beyond the confines of the thought experiment 
prompting us to reconsider our perceptions of intelligence and understanding. In our quest to understand the complexities of the Chinese room argument, we now turn to a pivotal contention, the distinction between simulation and duplication. Searle posits that while a computer may simulate understanding, it can never truly duplicate it. This is akin to distinguishing a weather forecast from actual weather or computerized digestion from the biological process. But this distinction isn't always clear-cut. Consider artificial hearts and limbs. Are they simulations or functional duplicates? The answer may lie in the properties required for an object or process to be classified a certain way. As suggested by David Chalmers, a simulation can indeed become the real thing if it possesses the necessary high-level properties, regardless of differences in lower-level properties. However, this notion is not without its critics. Some argue that the human brain may possess unique operations not replicable by a Turing machine, thereby limiting the potential for true simulation. Moreover, the distinction between simulation and duplication becomes especially murky in the context of evolution. Searle maintains that genuine understanding is a product of biological evolution, exclusive to certain systems, while computers merely simulate this understanding. But if there's no observable behavioral difference between a system that understands and one that simulates understanding, how can evolution select for genuine understanding? This notion raises questions about the evolutionary advantage of genuine understanding over mere computational processes. Indeed, the distinction between simulation and duplication, especially in the context of the Chinese room argument, opens a Pandora's box of philosophical questions. It forces us to reconsider our understanding of intelligence, cognition, and the very essence of understanding. As we continue to explore the depths of this argument, we remain committed to challenging our preconceived notions and expanding our intellectual horizons. In the aftermath of the philosophical conundrum presented by the Chinese Room argument, we find ourselves in a sea of unresolved debates and potential future directions. Since its inception in 1980, the Chinese Room argument has ignited fiery discussions across a variety of disciplines. However, despite the extensive discourse, there is still no consensus on the argument's soundness. On one end of the spectrum, philosopher Julian Baggini views the argument as a powerful counterexample that inflicted significant damage on the theory of functionalism. On the other end, philosopher Daniel Dennett dismisses it as a fallacious and misleading argument. The absence of a consensus leaves us questioning whether the argument limits the aspirations of artificial intelligence or computational accounts of mind. Meanwhile, advancements in artificial intelligence and natural language processing continue unabated. The Chinese room argument led to quests for symbol grounding in AI and the development of naturalistic theories of mental content. Speculation about the nature of consciousness persists across disciplines, and the role of computers has shifted from confined lab spaces to our pockets and wrists. With the advent of virtual personal assistants and AI-powered devices, the discourse around the Chinese room argument remains relevant. Claims by companies producing AI and natural language systems range from modest to exuberant. But as we've seen, many believe that the Chinese room argument demonstrated that computers can, at best, simulate human cognition. Both Leibniz and Searle, separated by three centuries, share similar intuitions about their respective thought experiments. They highlight the challenges we face in understanding meaning and minds. The issues raised by the Chinese room argument may remain unresolved until there is a consensus on the nature of meaning, its relation to syntax, and the biological basis of consciousness. The disagreement about what processes create meaning, understanding and consciousness, and what can be proven a priori by thought experiments, continues. As we delve deeper into this fascinating argument, we remain hopeful that future discourse will bring us closer to answers and a more comprehensive understanding of intelligence. Wow, what a journey we've been on together, exploring the depths of the Chinese room argument. We've navigated through the mysteries of understanding and intelligence, dissected the Chinese room argument and its counterarguments, and delved into the larger philosophical issues it presents. 
We've even explored the evolution of the argument and the unresolved debates it continues to spark. If you found this deep dive into the Chinese room argument insightful and engaging, why not give this video a like? Your support helps us create more content like this. And if you're hungry for more thought-provoking content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. This will ensure you're notified every time we release a new video. Thanks for joining us on this intellectual adventure. We hope that we've sparked your curiosity and challenged your understanding of intelligence and consciousness. Remember, the journey doesn't stop here. There's a whole universe of ideas out there waiting to be discovered. Until next time, keep exploring.